An Australia without rugby league is not Australia. Um, rugby league has been a fabric of our society for hundreds of years. It's people's escape, it's people's relaxation, and we need to do everything in order to continue that great uh, tradition of rugby league. It has been those Australians who have worked hard every day. They had their dreams, they had their aspirations. These are the quiet Australians who have won a great victory tonight. Well, boys, I hate to disagree, but 21 years ago, it wasn't a great victory. 1999, the christening of the brand-new stadium out at Homebush pre-Olympics with St George and Melbourne, of course, and St George... Disaster. Got, disaster. Got disaster. bundled out. <laughs> now, our special guest today, Dennis Carnahan, Chris Gale, good afternoon. Good uh, afternoon. Uh, Ignatius Jones is our special guest today. Talk about, on this very day, 20 years ago, was the opening night ceremony of the Sydney Olympics 2000 AD. Was it ever? Was it ever? <laughs> so we're here to talk about that today. Uh, though the venue was built for the Olympics, it was used for that one big event, the grand final before mm -hmm. the Olympics. And then I think you had to squeeze out during the Olympics at some point for rehearsals because of the rugby league again. Is that true? Yeah, we had to go uh, to Schofields, right. which was mm, about three miles south of Bump. Right. So we might yeah. say that the Olympics are the biggest game on the planet, but really rugby league can push the Olympics out the door for a few Indeed time. they can. <laughs> <laughs> Politis. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, uh, there's a few things I want to touch upon here. There was a number of segments in the opening. Rick Birch was the executive producer. Correct me if I'm wrong on all this. Uh, Rick Birch was the director of ceremonies. Ceremonies, okay. Yeah, there's a whole sort of Olympic hier hierarchy, yeah. you know, with, with titles and stuff. With, you know, Kind of like the royal family. <laughs> so how do do you are you like you know if you're Prince Charles, what is David Atkins? <laughs> <laughs> Prince Philip. Andrew. No. <laughs> Prince Philip. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, David Atkins. Uh, well, he was a dancer. He was in Squizzy Taylor, uh, choreographer and event producer that you worked with many, many times. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked with David for twelve years, um, and I actually met him through the Olympics. Until then, he was kind of. Gosh, Australia's lead producer and director in a certain world. Musicals? No, dance Yeah, music. sort of. Put it this way, he has 14 Mo Awards. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, is that like <laughs> facial, <laughs> facial sculptures? <laughs> so he's, he's a master of is a Mo, Is that for comedy? But um, given that, that this... this this thing happened 20 years ago today. Just a bit of backstory about how you got involved and how long did it take before you actually got to this day? Gosh. Uh, well, as you know, <laughs> I was in, uh, in popular music with you. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Stephen was in popular music, Ignatius, was he? <laughs> <laughs> We've never heard anything about this. <laughs> you know, we're just about to make our first Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd started off ridiculously enough as a classical ballet dancer and an opera singer. And while I was training for this, I, I um, broke my toe. To the first um, of many. Yeah, the, oh, <laughs> my God. The first bone I broke. Oh, many, yeah. And I haven't stopped since. But um, while I was off, you know, I mean, uh, from, from the ballet school, um, my brother had a rock and roll band. That's and right. He said to me, oh, you know, all this shit and you can dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I yeah, had yeah. to learn. This is Louis. Yeah, this is yeah. Louis. I, I remember learn... seeing them at a venue on the Pacific Highway at St. Leonard's downstairs. I don't even know what the venue was called then. No, Nothing so I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Probably a wine bar. Yeah, the <laughs> pickled <laughs> parrot or something like that. Stop me if like I digress too much. <laughs> the <right>? train station. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I ended up in, in, in this band. Um it was called, well, I don't know what it was called, but I said, no, 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 I won't do. I want to call it Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> and they should have known yeah. what was coming up. Yeah. And I had much longer hair than I do now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was 1974. 
Oh, so it's pre Jimmy and the Boys. Oh yeah, it yeah, was yeah, pre Jimmy okay. and the Boys. You know, I had the huge high heels. Everything was black, <laughs> uh, cast iron jewelry, black fingernails. It was long. I looked like Lou Reed's mother. <laughs> <laughs> and and my mates, you know, I'd been at Riverview um, <laughs> and left. That has been a few uh, a few wayward types, hasn't it? Indeed. Well. One of my, William O'Riordan, um, <laughs> who was in the, the year um, before me, he uh, had moved to Cranbrook right. where he joined this really fey jazz rock band. <laughs> There's I nothing th- wrong with fusion. <laughs> you know, I, I think they were called Stamps. <laughs> you know, At a Z in your way. Yeah. Anyway, I became really good mates yeah. with them and... When they heard that I was performing, um, I think it was at the Lane Cove High Prom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they all turned up to see it. And <laughs> somehow they must have been on drugs. They, at the end of the show, they went, oh, you've got to join Jimmy and the Boys. <laughs> I went, really? Anyway, the next year was 1976 and it was you know, punk rock. And I said, guys, nah. Yeah, it doesn't work. You gotta cut all your hair. You know, you, you you've gotta get rid of the bell bottoms. You've got to start <laughs> wearing leather. <laughs> and, you saw Jimmy and the boys, Chris? I don't reckon I ever saw you no. guys live because at that p- point of time I was about fourteen, fifteen and not ah, quite see, going yeah. out. But I do have a very, very clear memory of you guys being on John Singleton's talk show. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. And, and he started commenting on my skin. Yeah. And 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 and, and I, if I remember correctly, he was – and, I mean, we're looking for a rugby league connection all the time, aren't we, yeah, Stephen? Because the main reason we're not covering rugby league today is because the Dragons and the Tigers yeah. are out. But and that uh, pushes Dennis into a convenient yeah. corner. Yep, yeah. right. yep, yep, yep. But, but Singo, I think at one stage – asked you guys about the fact that you simulated cunnilingus on stage. <laughs> and as a young teenager, that was terrific television for me. And I was interested. So you didn't have to go to the dictionary? No, no, no. no. no, no, no. It, was, it was really interesting. You know, we, I suppose we were the first you know, out of it gay act yeah. in Australian history, uh, especially in the rock and roll world. And none of our... None of our fans were gay. They no, were all no. these sort of, you know. That's just, I don't think we used to think about that. No, just, no, you didn't. A, you know, you, and, yeah. and, and they would, show it, away you go. They would, they, you know, you'd have all these surfies with their shirts off mm. at the front of the, front of the <laughs> band going, 16, no, no, 16. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd, I'd go, yeah, 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 wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this was like pre-pistols really, wasn't it? I mean, you, you same time. So, so you were uh, responding to that? You put your finger to the wind, surely. Sorry? You put put your finger to the wind and thought, okay, where are we going? Oh, it was happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, if, if you think about what was happening in Australia at the time, it was Sherbet. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I... <laughs> but at the same time, for example, I remember maybe a little bit after, but the, the Paris uh, Theatre the was Paris putting on theater. wild performances of all sorts, including punk rock, you know. Yep. There was little bars like Blondie's at Bondi Junction and I remember X used to play up at the Unicorn. There was, the, you know, the, the Hopeton, there were pubs yeah, doing their uh, business. Across the road at the, what became Gilligan's. That's right, right. Yeah, the auction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there was that formative moment where on ABC used to have Weekend Magazine on the, the Channel 2 News mm-hmm. and they pl- they did a piece on the Sex Pistols. Right. And, and I reckon that's, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, I got into music because I saw Bowie put my arm, his arm around yeah. Mark Ronson on top of the pops. Nicholson. I reckon for a lot of Australian musicians, <laughs> that, was, that little piece must have just yes. changed Well, things. you and Absolutely. Countdown were friends, of course. Sorry? You and Countdown, oh, you were in lockstep like, for many years. With for, for many. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, I used to do this, this rave. You know, it was part of the show. I mean, uh, people who thought that, that Jimmy and the Boys was real. You know, it's a little bit like thinking a magician is yeah. real. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm a trained ballet dancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. They didn't and, see uh, that. You know, we we planned it all. You know, and and journalists would would always say after an interview, "Oh my God, you're so civilized. I thought you were going to throw <laughs> up on me." You know, and I, and I go, "Yeah, you know." <laughs> you can do that too. Yeah, I can do that too. I did a couple of times, but. Uh, it, but yeah, the the uh, 
it was all highly planned, and I had this rave during the act about Molly, you know, which just went on and on, and you know, it would build. Did you know Molly at that point? No. No, okay. Right, so I didn't so know fishing. Molly. I hadn't met Molly yet. Uh, and then one night at Bombay Rock, which was kind of like Melbourne's versus version of the Lifesaver. Yes, yes. Um, I was in the middle of the Molly rave, and the people down the front were going, he's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've gone to pantomime now. <laughs> and, and he was. <laughs> anyway, he... Uh, but you could say that he took you not under his wing, but he, you were part of his circus. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He he loved it. He I wanted, mean, he'd yeah. never had so much attention. Yeah. I mean, any man that can go, let's get any... let Iggy Pop go nuts. Yeah. As well as John Paul Young do whatever he wants to do, and you, good luck to us. Yeah, he wasn't, yeah. He, you know, he's a, he's a clever man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clever man. And as you say, we, we became part of the Molly, you know, which sobered Iggy Pop yeah, and so John Paul show. Young. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, yeah. I remember one night we were at Molly's house um, and he loved to, to do dinner parties, right? And he'd have the current boyfriends yeah. and the Iggy Pops and the John yes. Paul Youngs and sitting around the table. Uh, and most of the time the little boyfriends would be shunted out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> at this particular time they'd gone out the back where the swimming pool was yes. And they also had one of the first, um, uh, what do you call them, you know. Spa? Yeah, bath things. That, <laughs> you thought that so coming, bubbled, what are they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, Jacuzzi. And anyway, in an Egyptian <laughs> theme, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. With an Egyptian <laughs> theme and they pour tons of, of Luxor brand um, <laughs> bubble bath. I think they've taken his entire stock and they filled the... The uh, what are they called? Hot Jacuzzi. tub, hot tub, hot tub. Hot tub. Hot tub. Yeah. You know, with lots of bubbles. <laughs> and anyway, we we're sitting there having dinner, and there's all these glass doors going out to the pool. And suddenly, we saw this wave <laughs> of bubbles, <laughs> you know, which was about twelve feet high, <laughs> moving across the pool. <laughs> Molly and then freaked. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> that was what in the happened? opening ceremony, wasn't it? I think I remember that scene. <laughs> In the deep sea section. If I could, because we've got an hour here, Ignatius. We have to go from we go from your music career, career which of course, um, you know, there was <laughs> mid, mid, your big band's you never period, missed. Yeah. You know, arms and legs, which is a, sort of a you know proto sort of futuristic funk band like Talking yeah. Heads or whatever. Many other things, but somehow you moved into events. What was that sort of switch over into events? Well, uh, pardon me, boys. Yeah. You know, yeah. another twelve years later or something. Uh, was a swing band, mm -hmm. um, and we were, you know, we went out. Every time you say that, do you want to sing? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <Pardon> <laughs> me, boy. Oh, he's too, it's out of Patagonian toothfish. You know? <laughs> uh, so in ninety one, ninety two, um, the Sydney Festival yep. asked us to do something. With that and, and me, create a yeah, yeah, pardon okay. me, and create a 1940s dance hall, right? Um, oh, a sort of crocodile, Sydney Town yeah, Hall. That's right, yeah. And um, I was on stage and you know arranging the music and working on the choreography, you know. So I said, I want, I want to get a, a director. Yeah, who fee. can actually direct? Oh, fee. you want a director, not to get a director's fee? Uh, no, no, I wanted a, a director fee? as well. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, I found this young guy called Baz Lerman. Yeah. Who um, you know <laughs> never went on to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he was right into it. Um, well, fresh out of NIDA. or still fresh in, out of NIDA. He was still yeah. in NIDA. Yeah, right. Yeah, wow. Still in NIDA. Yeah. And Jimmy Sharman, yep. who I'd known from the Paris Theatre yes, days, yes, yes. said, oh, "I've got this." up the road from me in Victoria Street many years ago. Really? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Love Jimmy. Mm. Um, anyway, Jimmy said, "I've got this fabulous young guy. You know, you'll like him." And we did. We got on like a house on yeah. fire. And and CM was, you know, the uh, yeah, yeah. Fresher Martin. We used to call Martin, her, sorry. Um, because she did look like a, a young schoolboy um, <laughs> or a thirteen-year-old lesbian. You know, take your pick. <laughs> anyway, it went really well, and you know, it ran for three or four years. Um, and during that, I was running a, you know, starving, running a big band. Um, we got the Olympics. Uh, Rick Birch yes. came. Rick Birch was a big. Was a kind of a producer, director, and his first big hit was Bellbird. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, was he involved with GTK? No, 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 okay. no, no. You, uh, that Molly. The, um, okay. And a number of the countdown people. Yes. So okay. Rick said, "Yeah, it'll so be Did you know them. Rick? No, no. So how did you then get involved with? That? So Rick was part of the bid team, mm -hmm. the Olympic bid team, and uh, he had been, he had directed the. Uh, 1982 Com Games in Brisbane. Yeah. The opening of that, you know, with the, the uh, uh, Matilda, blinking, Matilda, the blinking yeah. Yeah. too, who um, who lost her load literally. <laughs> uh, she came <laughs> to the stadium. There was Prince Philip, and she very lasciviously winked at Prince <laughs> Philip, and at the very same time, who was in charge of the winking? <laughs> could have been. At the very same time, she burst an oil tank <laughs> and this huge black slick emerged between her legs. <laughs> All through I didn't see the, that on the camera. <laughs> yeah, the, the influence of Prince Is this Philip. on YouTube? This should be on YouTube. <laughs> It probably, it probably is. It, it needs to be. Oh, it needs to. And I think Birch, he was involved in some of the, like Los Angeles as well, wasn't he? So, so, yeah. so what happened in Los Angeles was they'd hired Disney mm. to do their opening ceremony. And anyway, um, uh, what was his name? He became the mayor of Los Angeles. After. Uh, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Schwarzenegger. Uh, no, 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 he was the Walt? governor. Who was the mayor? That's right. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. He wasn't the mayor at the time. Anyway. Yeah. He uh, had a fight with Disney. They wanted to Mickey Mouse yeah. the whole Olympic ceremony. He said, you can't do that. Mm. Um, and so they, were, they had no creatives. And funnily enough, an Australian fireworks guy, Sid Howard, um, oh, yeah. whom they'd hired, said, oh, you should have a look at this Rick guy. Yeah. He did a great job with Brisbane. Yeah. So over Rick goes, he wasn't actually the director. He was no. the production manager. Right. But he still yeah. helped facilitate stuff like the um, 84 Grand Piano yes. and the, Where was you know, the Rocket Man. The... That's no, Barcelona. That's, that's Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. Which Hormone. Rick also did. did. Right, okay. Right. The, the, the closing ceremony of Los Angeles in 84 is the guy in the, the jet pack. No, that's opening. Oh, it's opening as well, right? Yeah, it's yeah. opening. Which was replicated on the 1991 Dangerous Tour with Michael Jackson. Yes. And so at the end of the show, they do this magic trick or they put a box yeah. around him and out would emerge the rocket man and theoretically it was Jackson zooming off into <laughs> yes. the distance, right? And in the history tour, which was 96, you got this video on rails and it's flying towards your city and out of the floor pops Michael Jackson in the same suit five years later. Just like that. Unbelievable. Mm. Uh, he Unbelievable. was in the ether, lost. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> wasn't, there, wasn't there a grand final that had someone on a jetpack? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the NRL, but it would have been well before 91. And this would have been in the 80s. Well, yeah. It was like at 80, 81. R Rugby league is a proving ground exactly. for big global exactly. events. Exactly. Yeah. They're, they're all watching. They're 40 all second watching. street didn't work out, yeah. but you know. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis and I, in, in, in our very small way, we, we work out of that same institution, you know, the, the Homebush Olympic Stadium. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody's trying to find ways all the time of what can we do with this stadium to make it, you know. <laughs> Burn it. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Knock it down. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a break and we'll come back in a minute. We're going to talk about the opening ceremony, 2000 Sydney Olympics, 50, 20 years today, the 15th of September with Ignatius Jones. It was Carnahan, the scale myself. We're back, Dennis Carnahan. How you doing? You must be feeling pretty damn good since your team beat my team last weekend. In actual fact, your team didn't beat my team. My team just collapsed. They were bloody hopeless. I think that it was 
I'm, you I'm don't like, announce. I'm, I'm not going to get a word in, am I? The, you don't <laughs> announce with three weeks to go the leaving of all the support staff of a team and hope to get a good result. It's not a good idea. I don't know who thought that was a great idea. Have you finished? Have yes, you? I have. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky's word is ambush. We're ambush. preparing a finals ambush from fifth good place. Good luck to you. And you people don't know what's, what goes on in this jersey. Oh, that, shit. That, oh God, I love Ricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Un, we were, uncharted we were... territories. What about Papali signed on? I thought he was uh, he's unhappy signing. and lost and now he's green, bleeding green. Well, it was, funnily enough, it was all Brisbane media saying that. Uh, the, all the stories about Papali wanting to leave. And also, you know, Tommy Starling, your boy Tommy Starling, who Tommy waved Starling. at you. Yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> he's, he's signed on as well. Yeah. <laughs> See us, Oli Ola. Come on, what about oh, Cody Ramsey? Oh. Cody Ramsey. First game. Two tries, should have been three. Well, he, he came on um, ABC Grandstand immediately after the game. We had the first interview with him. You know he's not really re- quite there because he's still got the ponytail. Well, he has, you know? but you know what the first word he said as a, as a after the, his debut, two try. you know what the first word he said was? Michael Luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it, that third try that was called back, yeah. they got the was, isolation camera on his mother and who, she was saying, at the top of her Michael lungs, yelled, Luck Michael you. Luck off. So the question is, <laughs> is his dad, in fact, Gordon Ramsay? Yes. yes. <laughs> that was, that was posited on one of the footy yes. shows. Yeah. You got Ste- the good genes then. <laughs> Stephen, we're so lucky to have Ignatius with us. I don't want to take up too much no, no. time, but I do simply want to say. Oh, yes. Uh, Ignatius is a Raiders fan. How could you not be? Love that look. The lost dark. <laughs> As you know, Doughboy Pizza has come on as a sponsor of Fire Ups Quite Australia. And I had no idea their history matched the Olympics. It's incredible. Yeah. Because 20 years ago, yeah. some young men with a dream. <laughs> it was triggered by the Olympics, was it? And their dream was crispy, fresh and artisanal. Oh. <laughs> now, I, 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 I had a dream like that last night, yeah. but it was in a different context to pizza. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they also applied. I don't recall pizzas being at the opening ceremony, but I'm sure they were yeah. stuck in there somewhere. Well, they only <laughs> just opened. Yeah, they were too busy just... formulating a way that Doughboy Pizza began 20 years ago. Right. And they are a sponsor of Fire Ups Quiet Australia. Yeah. Now, this is spooky. 20 years ago, the Sydney Olympics opening ceremony, basically mm-hmm. Ignatius Jones single-handedly pulls it off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Doughboy boys change pizza in Sydney, mm-hmm. well, particularly South North Bondi, Artarman and Randwick forever. Right. 20, 20 years. <laughs> and they're offering a discount on their wonderful pizzas, yes. thin and crispy. Anybody who's listening. Spelt or yeah. gluten-free, yeah. simply by entering the code FIREUP, yep. F-I-R-E-U-P, caps or no caps, and have a guess how much off you get if you enter that. 15. Oh. 10%. 20%. 20%. 20%. Isn't 20 that years, spooky? 20 years, 20%. Yep. Do they have it? 20 yeah. years, 20%. Yep. Do they have a, a, a pizza called the Sergeant Pepper? Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, they're, they're working on that, Dennis. And so <laughs> if you want to, like we are, wade in nostalgia because there'll be endless shows for the next two weeks. They've got one called Nicky Webster, right? 100%. Yeah. They've got a Webster. Well, we've got Sergeant Pepper here. Get the Doughboy pizza and you'll enjoy yourselves. Yeah. We've got Sergeant Pepper right here. Absolutely. It was, it was on the day. All right, Ignatius, uh, we're, we're going to have another segment. We're going to talk about your music career. We're going to talk about the opening night of the Olympics. But what I want to know, first of all, is were there internally, because I remember walking into your office where you worked with Rick Birch and David yeah. Atkins and everybody else, uh, because you drafted my brother and I to, to help you with the fireworks music in 99. And then my brother mm-hmm. Pee, I think, went on yeah. to do the other one after that. Uh, there obviously was a robust discussions for years about what themes you would use. And, and obviously Australia presented to the world is... The, the premise, I suppose, and there are various segments. Uh, there's the immigrants, you know, you, the man from Snowy River, the, the rural history, uh, the indigenous section with Rhoda Roberts and uh, Stephen Page, many others. What did you drop out? What did you? What was the fight like to get that organised? That theme. Uh, look, the, the the main the main thing there was that Rick had did have a you know one very good idea, mm. which was rather than to make it the work of a single person, to bring nine directors on. Right. Mm-hmm. And stick them in a room. Um, and did a really interesting thing. He'd, he'd managed to get uh, all these clips from the different Olympics for the last, I think he went all the way back to Montreal mm-hmm. and just showed what they had done. And it was quite interesting because Montreal did bugger all. Mm-hmm. And did a little <laughs> bit of folk dancing and... 76, Leg Montreal? slapping. Yep, right. 76. Uh, 76. Six, yeah. yeah 70... didn't win any gold medals. Not one. Nada. Yeah. That's a trick question. <clears> 72, they didn't really want to remember. Right. <laughs> yeah. As you wanted to remember of the Palestinians. But there was, an, but... was there an overlay of what do, particularly Americans, what do people overseas know of Australia? Uh, we kind of wanted to sort of leave that out. Okay. Because, you know, as I, as I said later, 
the Sydney Olympics owed a lot more to Oxford Street than they did to Anzac Parade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was something we really <laughs> wanted to do was to get that whole, get that whole, you know, dry as a bone. Um, a Cobra. A Cobra slouch hat, yes. horses. We wanted to get it, you know. Get it done and out. Get it out. And sure enough, that's why they gave it to the gay Spaniard. <laughs> The man from Snowy um, River. The man from Snowy River. And, you know, I had to fight for the man from Snowy River. Right. And I said, you know, come on, we've only got one national poem. And that's it. And you know what? It's not a bad poem. But um, we had all politically correct people going, no, 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 you can't do that. And we had the indigenous people saying, oh, horses trampled our, our heritage. Of course. Uh, and, and, you so know, there was conflict. Ah, look, there was yeah. conflict yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But it was uh, political, wasn't it? Because I think that the first opening ceremony that had anything to it was Moscow. And, it was. And, and, the, and the Russians, were because of the boycotts. Because of the boycotts. And, That's uh, absolutely correct. And, the, and the, the, the key moment, a little bit like Matilda winking, which was a bit of a lift <laughs> at the end, they had all the panels up of Mishka the bear, yeah. and they were able to make the bear cry by flipping the yeah. panels. Oh, by flipping the heart of Russia. Soviet organisation. <laughs> meticulous. That's called a card stunt. Thank you very much. Right? <laughs> and the card stunt has become a really important part of Olympic ceremonies, yeah. and I have always just waited in in hope that someone would get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, when we were doing the, da- the Doha Asian Games yeah, right. <laughs> um, in 2006, David Atkins, <laughs> David and I were working on it, and <laughs> David had to go on the radio to talk about all the great things that were going to be yes, yes. Uh, in the opening Is that ceremony. because you're more of a wild card than David? <laughs> when it comes to front in the press? <laughs> oh, no, I'm pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. I get you are pretty anyway, good. Anyway, <laughs> he was really tired. Yeah. And sure enough, he said, and we'll have lots of stars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we we up, say Carmichael Hunts. Yeah. Yeah. How we say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> he came up that one. Wow. Did anyone hear me? Did anyone hear me? I said, yeah, all of the Middle East. <laughs> So yeah. you did do the horses, the Akubras. Yeah, that was a great, great, yeah, I yes, did. Yes. I, it was a, a truly great moment with, with, with the horses. The whole idea with the horses, I've been working <laughs> in Dollywood. Had Corey, you? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, that's my first, <laughs> my first foray into major events wow. was choreographing and directing yeah. the shows at Dollywood, the Dolly Parton's Rodeo Theatre yeah. in Tennessee, South Carolina, That's a great kickoff. Missouri. Great oh, <laughs> see if you can get through that. that. So that was in the 90s? That was in the 90s. Right, yeah. because I don't know if you heard you Dolly Parton. You were there, Parton. weren't you? Yeah, no, I wasn't. <laughs> but have you heard Dolly Parton's America? The, the, the multi part podcast they've just made? No. The guy who did uh, does um, Radio Lab. Right. His, his father, his Iranian background from memory, and his father mm. treated a close member of Dolly's family in Tennessee, mm. and they came together and they'd done a whole exploration of Dolly. And one, <laughs> and one of the things that's happened in Dollywood is they've actually taken away all the southern iconography, like the Union flag and all that. She right. just recently yeah. removed the it. The Confederate be, flag. Be, yes, yeah. because previously the audience, and you'd know this, was mm. divided into the north and the south. As that part of the theatre exactly. restaurant experience, yeah. That's, that's what the theatre restaurant experience was. And I was actually, I do declare. No, oh, and you came in, and depending on which side of the room you sat on, you were the north or you were the south. And tonight we're going to refight Civil War. And you actually had people stand up and go, I'm not going to be the north. <laughs> and, and, of course, the MC was on a horse. He would say, but we're all brothers now. <laughs> That, that that podcast is amazing because she's fully cooperative and participates in it. Yeah. And she's, she's used to write uh, and record the songs on audio cassettes. And she wasn't fastidious about the cataloging of them. Mm. And on one of the audio cassettes is Jolene and I Will Always Love You. And she says, I can't guarantee this, but it's possible I wrote those two songs on the same night. Don't say that. <laughs> That's what she says. That's what they used to do, right? Yeah. Dennis, you know that. Wow. Yeah. Well, the, 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 I was actually brought there originally because Rick Birch yeah. was, he'd, he'd created the first show and during it he discovered that he was 
utterly allergic to horses. <laughs> <laughs> in your coming nations? Well, uh, you know, yeah. I'd just done the opening of Crown Casino yeah, for yeah, him. Yeah. And the, after it, I said, that was great work. He, um, tell me something. <laughs> What do you know about country music? <laughs> you I know went, most things about most music, right? Uh, well, yeah, but country music was a complete blank. And I said, well, no, I can learn. And he said, what do you know about horses? And I said, nothing. He said, good. <laughs> and I was off to Tennessee. Wow. And the issue they had was they had a Christmas show, uh, which ran for about three weeks. And it was said in the Civil War. <laughs> and it wasn't working. <laughs> I said, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I said, well, why, you know, why, why don't we do something more Christmassy, you know, like, like the Nutcracker? <laughs> and I was sitting at this table with the board of Dollywood, and they went, Nutcracker. <laughs> you, tell and me I this said, again. it's, um, yeah, it's a lot like uh, the Little Rummer Boy. <laughs> and they went, oh, Little Rummer Boy, Dolly sings that. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, must have also had to keep your tongue many times at many meetings. The stuff you may have heard for, from clients, for example. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking yeah. for an example. But anyway, uh, so that, got, that's we, another great we've story. We've got the man from Snowy River. The man from Snowy River. So, so the, the whole idea between about this was that <clears throat> five lines yeah. of 20 horses would come out, you know, in, in – you know, in a straight regimental sort yeah, of yeah, in a line, yeah. and to do that, they had to come through the voms. Yes, uh, all, all, for some gorgeous reason, all entrances and exits to a stadium are called vomitoriums. Yeah, right. <laughs> I suppose it's because the they right? vomit people into. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so we had it worked out that that you know, a certain number could come in from the two side voms, and a certain number could come in from the end vom. Yeah. And then two weeks before the opening ceremony, they decided to put an air conditioning duct right across right. the end bomb, <laughs> which meant that the riders right. coming in with their flags, you know, they when had fit, to... Fit. Well, they, they had to, oh, to couch them it. like lances. And yeah. even though they had poles on the end, if yeah. someone had stopped, they would have got this oh. flag up their rear. Yeah. So they had to enter walking, which was really interrupting Jeez. our... Look, I suggested, well, why don't we pull focus to the forming of lines by bringing in a sole rider, yeah. you know, right. no flag, he can gallop straight through, yes. he gets to the middle, we've got a spotlight the, the on dark. him. Rears Sorry. the horse up. Rears the horse up yeah. and cracks Quacks. his whip. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, that was not a real whip crack. <laughs> don't tell me the timing was automatic, a button. Yeah, we flew it in. Shh. Stop it, Stephen. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but the two great things about that horse, we had to find a horse that reared. Now, horses don't like to rear. Oh. They only rear if they see a snake. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, so yeah. we, we, just, we, we went everywhere around Australia trying to find a horse that reared. Does that mean also you had to find a rider who can ride a rearing horse when a rearing horse only rears in panic? Exactly. <laughs> and, I mean, wow. you know, the best one was when we went to El Caballo Blanco. Do you yes. remember? Yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. have thought that was just a given. The oh, first one you go we to. We found a horse that reared, At but El that Caballo. was a Spanish riding school horse, and that horse was so gay. <laughs> you know, he practically <laughs> wore mascara. <laughs> and I was going, no, no. That's not that. Out back a <laughs> it well, needs to be more is. butch. Yeah, well, we hadn't done Priscilla yet. You know, we were... <laughs> anyway, the, the, about a week before the opening, our head horse whisperer, Steve Jeffries, gives me a call and says, mate, you won't believe this. I got a horse of my arrears. <laughs> and I said, really? He said, yeah, they brought me, because he was the whisperer. You know, they brought, me, they brought him to me for me to fix him. Yeah. I bought him. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, Steve made a fortune from that horse because his name was his name was Ammo because his father's name was the Gun and he was the son of the Gun. You know? Gotcha. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he was perfect, right? Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, you could get all the other horses in quietly in the dark. We got yeah, all we, the other horses. We, we have whispers in rugby league too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the Manfred Snowy River was narrated. 
No. No. No, he didn't. It was we, just the concept what? of it. Because John Stanton was the narrator, right? Sorry? John Stanton was the narrator. John Stanton was the narrator. Jesus' voice was good, wasn't oh, it? I love John Stanton. He played yeah. Malcolm Fraser in The Dismissal. Yeah, that's right. Fantastic. <laughs> John Stanton could read the Melbourne Telephone. 100%. I <laughs> love that guy. Uh, that's an interesting choice because I was listening going, what a great voice. It was, it was very BBC nearly, you know. Uh, then, of course, the anthem, uh, Human Nature, Julie Anthony. Yeah, that was the Human Nature, who were good mates of mine. Yes. You know, from the business. They... Um, <laughs> They ambushed me in, they the, just... in the dressing rooms at Mike Walsh. Right. And they said, stop, 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 stop. And, you know, we were... They knew you had the job. They knew I had the yeah, job. Okay. And we were sharing a dressing room with little Patty. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she had a... He, she had a bottle of um, Southern Comfort, <laughs> which we were sharing, <laughs> as you do when well, you have to go well, on. Well, if you've been to Dollywood, it makes sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go to go on at 10 a.m. and sing <laughs> harmony. <laughs> with, with, oh, yeah. with the Jeff Harvey Orchestra. <laughs> with the Jeff Harvey Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> if she hadn't had the Southern Comfort, I know he would have. Anyway, the, so we're in there. We're having a ball with, yeah. with Patty. And it's an absolute scream. And they walk in. They go, just, 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 just let us do this. And they had a little pitch fight. <laughs> and then... <laughs> They sang yeah. in stunning four part yes, harmony. Beautiful harmony, yeah. yeah. They, and I cried, Patty cried, and I put his in because the Australian anthem is difficult. It is. Yeah. But the big deal was two verses, right? Two verses. Right. Absolutely, because we had to give Julie Anthony something to do. Right, <laughs> right. And, and her <coughs> husband, whose name I can't remember, and manager, um, I remember in. Doug the, Anthony. In the because uh, we we actually ended up with the Human Nature, Julie Anthony, the Sydney Symphony, Simone Young, yes. James Morrison, that's right, Big Band. Um, it was bigger than Ben. Mm. You know, it so huge. so Human Nature sang the first verse, and then Julie came in for the second, right? Yeah, and then uh, she's pretty pitch perfect, though, isn't she? And, oh, she <laughs> doesn't need a pitch pipe. And, no, and, she does not. She's, and according to Wikipedia, pipe. so it must be true. Yeah. The, uh, NBC nixed the James Morrison part of the anthem because they were putting it on plausibly live. So they, they actually edited some of the stuff. Ignatius, I was in New York City, yeah. Australian friends, a couple of pommies watching it, uh, patriotic tears. This is our city. This is fantastic. Yeah. There were many things that weren't in oh, there. Yeah. They cut a lot out as far as I could tell. It was only Arena, two... John Farnham, yeah. <clears throat> um, which was really weird because he was singing with... with his... uh, Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they knew Olivia. Yeah. And did you see his little trick? He dropped the microphone he from one hand to the other? Just like a typical John Farnham, like a wink, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, in those days, you mind. He Olympic didn't, though. Ceremonies. He didn't? He did. At the end, they didn't. They turned the mic on. So, oh, yeah, they turned it back on, but, ah. you, but you weren't hearing it. Yeah, all, all the Fixed orchestra the wasn't real. The, the right. band apparently was the one bit of live music that you the heard. The band was live. And, and there was a rugby league element. Was there? Yeah, so the... And you wonder if they do this exactly you the same. See how we're stringing our fans in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you, you wonder if they'd actually do it exactly this way th these days. But the whole European settlement, etc., was called the Tin Symphony, yeah. and it was depicting European settlement. Captain Cook, dot dot dot. But at one point, Victor Lawnmowers came out. Yes. Western Suburbs Magpies. Ah, there you go. They were the sponsors, weren't why they? Did, what, well, why did the Magpies get a run? What's wrong with exactly. the Tigers? <laughs> there, there was actually more rugby league involvement because if you look at the um, international organisations and the VIPs, the United Nations Secretary General, Kofi Annan, he was there. Um, the Commonwealth of Nations Secretary General was there. One Don McKinnon. Don McKinnon. Yeah. Now, is, I'm, I'm, assume, Bears I'm, and Manly I'm assuming Ringer it's the same Don it's McKinnon. Be, the guy who urinated on Lane Park. Park. <laughs> 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 it had to be him. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't want to be too nerdish about this, but your brother Pee Wee was involved in the arrival section about yeah. all, all the various communities coming to Australia. Which Lex Marinos explained that he wanted to have the unifying theme of dance music for yeah. we all dance around the world, yeah. different styles. And then they and the various nations were assigned one of the colours of the rings. Yes. Blue Pacific nations, I can go with that. Uh, green for Europe, sure. It starts to get a little bit interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Red for the Americas. Yeah. Uh, Russia. Yellow for Asia. Okay. <laughs> and black for Africa. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> well, actually, they, the, the first rings happened in 1912, the um, Antwerp Games, which right. is why that flag's called the Antwerp flag uh -huh. to this day. Oh. And it was invented by 
uh, Pierre Coubertin, the yes. founder of the Olympics. So in 1912, having what other color was Africa? Could exactly have been? right. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the Coubertin was a good man. <laughs> the, the deep dark Congo. <laughs> so, some of the trivia that that I dug up: yeah. 199 nations out of the 200 IOC nations at the time march which uh, afghanistan was excluded because the taliban were anti-sport <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is a legitimate argument you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tried it didn't work I, I'm, not, I'm not connecting the taliban to fbi radio in any way shape or form but um uh north north and south korea marched under a unified right. flag which was an extraordinary moment yeah. i remember that because i was there yes. <laughs> and east timor four east timorese athletes marched under the olympic flag because they weren't an accredited olympic nation at that stage right. and then when i was looking at um um, uh, Fanzi and Livy did Dare to Dream, but when they bought the big sheet over the crowd yeah, yeah. In, a, in a variation of a card stunt, I guess, yeah. and they're projecting images of the athletes on it, Vanessa Amorosi sang a song called Heroes Live Forever. Forever. What a set of pipes that girl has just hearing it. She's an extraordinary singer. And is it true that the flag ripped a few, not the flag, the material ripped a few times into rehearsal? No, in the rehearsal, it, it actually ripped. It came apart. <laughs> <laughs> we had... As you always do with any stadium ceremony, you have enormous problems with the press mm. who will go anywhere to get a good shot. shot. Yep. Yeah. And this time they decided, they, you know, no one knew about the giant flag, the giant piece of sailcloth no. that was going to come down those seats. Yeah. So these guys, NBC, it was the biggest nightmare you can have because they paid $3 billion for the Olympics and they're <laughs> going to film it. Yeah. However, they, they want to, <laughs> and they had hid themselves yeah. in the seats at the bottom of that end wow. of the stadium. Oh. <laughs> and as the flag was coming down, they jumped up with their cameras. They ripped it. Um, when they're looking at the field. Of course, yeah. there was nothing on the field, so yeah. they're just standing there like idiots, and they've got their flags up with their antennas. They're, sorry, the cameras up with their antennas, it's and the, the sheet comes <laughs> behind them. And just rips. And oh. you had some seamstress ready? We, they actually took it back to the sailcloth people. Did they? And they managed to do another one. Another one. But wow. overnight. So wow. it came, it came wow. down from the back of one of the temporary end stands that That's are no right. longer yeah. there. Mm. And the punters were just... No, no punters. This was just rehearsal. So you're, but, what, but when the punters were there, yeah. how did it work? Were there people... They, like, they, they just, they they just, just mucked with, in. They went with yeah, the flow. they just mucked in. Well, yeah. you would. Yeah. 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 Terrific. So for the first time and the last time, Sydney was in sync. It, we were all in sync. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, Parking, traffic. Yeah. We all People were friendly. Other. People were friendly to each I other. I came back from America leaving a very cynical city and suddenly found like the whole city was on ecstasy. Everyone's touching me and grabbing me and hugging me. It's like, what's going on in this city? You Queenslanders know? thought fondly of people from New South Wales and Victoria. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Briefly. So, Ignatius, you, um, we're going through this whole thing. I really did love the, was it, was it called The Awakening? No, The Indigenous. Awake, uh, uh, there was the Awakening, yes, The Awakening. Yes, Awakening yeah. and, uh, Roberts and Stephen yeah. Page, beautiful. And, yeah. You may have seen the Kathy, uh, the Freeman documentary last weekend. No? Uh, oh, yeah. No, I didn't you see should it. watch it because. Yeah. Um, I mean, we still don't know where her. Um, where her uh, yes, you do. It was, it was in the papers two weeks ago. Oh, really? It was anonymously sent back. Under much shame and guilt, somebody had obviously taken it from the dressing room and stored it for 20 years and just got, they, they stewed in their own shame. Is this the speed suit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. She took it off and then what, got home and went, oh, I wonder where that's gone. Should, the, wow. the Awakening was Jakapura Murun Yaran, who was with Nikki, and they sort of did the, the journey together, didn't they, yeah. through the whole, yeah. the whole well, show? That, that was the first time that many Indigenous uh, performers from all over the country had ever been. Brought together, and there's a fabulous story about that too. The Central Desert women, yeah. um, of whom there was about 250, had most of them had never worn a shirt yep. in their lives. Yeah. Most of them had never seen a car in their lives, yeah, yeah. and they were staying out west. I'd say, where would you accommodate all these people? Uh, wherever, wherever. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they were staying in a motel out yeah. west, and and a uh, young young guy Ben Gratz, who was um, from the Northern Territory. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous young stage manager who um, was in was indigenous but had been adopted wow. by a wealthy white couple and went to NIDA and you know he was your go between. He was their stage manager. Their stage manager. He yeah. was responsible yeah. for getting for getting them from where their motel was out west to um, to the stadium for dress rehearsals, etc., mm. etc. Cetera, et cetera. 
And on the day of the first dress rehearsal, the buses didn't turn up. Yeah. So Ben, <laughs> you know, being a, being a smart young man, took them on the train. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. They'd never <laughs> seen a drain. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, Opal card too. Yeah, yeah. Would have been complicated. Hey, look, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back for our last uh, section here, talking about the uh, opening of the Sydney Olympics uh, 20 years ago today, 15th of September, here on The Quiet Australian. See you in a minute. And made my heart go boom. The stars were flying. When the heart goes boom. Wow. Who was that, Chris? <laughs> so that is Olympic gold medalist, dual gold medalist, yeah. Susie O'Neill, Stephen. And a heart, She's magnificent. A, a, a song called My Heart Goes Boom that went out to her husband. Aww. Released it as a single. So a lot of great music came out of the Olympic Games, Sydney Olympic Games, and Susie's single as well. Um, <laughs> Susie, tremendous athlete, but... She will refer to the fact that she won the 200 metres freestyle at Sydney uh -huh. against expectation, mm. but she didn't win the 200 metres butterfly. Right. And, and her nickname, of course, was Madam Butterfly. Yes. And she's now on commercial radio in Brisbane. I'm very jealous of her. And Why not do a version of Puccini? Yeah, well, exactly. Hello. Like, 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 a, like a posthumous <laughs> a collab. work, with, I know. <laughs> do a posthumous collab with Malcolm McLaren. <laughs> Malcolm Come on, <laughs> it would be terrific. Terrific. Anyway, Did the did... husband like the song? I, well, I, I think they're now divorced, but, no, <laughs> but they're still together. And, and so last year on Brisbane Commercial Radio, they, she had never seen the race where she came second in the 200 metres oh. butterfly. Yeah. And they cued it to start her in the studio to watch, dissolved into tears before they even showed her the footage. It right. still okay. cuts, which is the way elite <laughs> athletes are. But some of the great music that did come out, Ignatius, was the Tin Symphony. And in the first break of this show, we played a bit of Ian Cooper, who you had an involvement with in getting that music involved. Yeah, I, in I played in a, in a band with, uh, with Ian called Jadassi mm. after a, um, a famous tango in the 1930s. Um, and one one night, Ian turned up with a uh, with a graphite electric violin. Oh, wow! Very mean looking, mm. and it was mm. a killer. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was it solid I body or it. empty body? Like Sorry? It was, was it solid body? Or solid was it, body. So mm. it was actually full. It was just so no reverb, no nothing. It was just electrics. The same. Uh, it was just electric, but he could yep. make that thing sing. Yeah. You know, mm. I mean, he, he had it plugged into fourteen pedals. Well, it means ah. also it can go loud if it hasn't got a. a, a yeah, a absolutely. Loop, loop chamber, it's not going to. Feedback. He was playing it yeah. without it being plugged in. You wouldn't Chris hear it. Chris and I yeah. fondly remember Jean-Luc Ponty, don't we? Well, I'm more of an Eddie Jobson fan uh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when he replaced Eno and Roxy Music yeah. and uh, <laughs> brought violin to rock and roll in a, in a different way to the Electric Eye Orchestra did it. That's right. I yeah. kind of like Charlie Daniels, personally. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. I can remember the name of the violinist in the Electric Eye Orchestra. Yeah, that is sad. <laughs> Mick Kaminsky. But anyway, we move on. <laughs> so we're, we're sort of, you know, obviously this is a potted history of yeah. that one particular night of the opening, which I think was four hours and something yeah, you never know how long it's going to be exactly because of the athletes' parade. Right, where were you? I was sitting about as far. <laughs> nosebleed, <laughs> you talking? Was, nosebleed. Mm. We were literally in the last row right. of the um, temporary that seats. That doesn't sound like status. Oh. No, oh. they um, they treated the directors like. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Okay. <laughs> but I was. What was great was that I was sitting next to Richard Werrett. Yes, oh, who Richard directed Ware. the last segment. The last yeah, yes. segment, yeah. including who the cauldron. Didn't He was oh. not alive and, and not many more years after that, was he? That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, he passed away Once soon Once married after. to Jackie Weaver? That's right. That's yes. right, yeah. Indeed. Wow, okay. Um, and poor old Richard, when yeah. that cauldron stopped, mm. uh, <laughs> was, you know one of those fabulous scenes where the person next to you sits on your lap and grabs your head <laughs> and starts to press hard. <laughs> you know, he, he was just about to be seen as a director who totally stuffed up in front of three billion people. Why? What was what happened? Um, <laughs> I still think it was over rehearsed. Ah. Uh, and everything in the cauldron was had backup. You know, everything. If one thing went wrong, then the other one would kick in. And if that went wrong, then the next one would kick in. Yes, okay. And that's kind of what happened. It was a 20-cent capacitor. 
Okay, oh. so before we go any further, nobody was supposed to know who was carrying the, the lighting the flame. Yeah. As I said, I was in New York, and when, when it uh, appeared, we just went ballistic, right? So you had, I think it was the centenary of, of women, women in yep. Olympics, can, and so... Can I talk you can through? Can you please? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, we yeah. had the Olympic flag beforehand, yeah. very quick, yeah. quickly. Bill Roycroft, equestrian, Murray Rose, swimming, Leanne Tooth, hockey, Gillian Rolton, equestrian... Marjorie Jackson, the Lithgow Flash, track and field. So there was no rugby league in the Olympics? Not yet. Yeah. Yes, there was. Yeah. Lorraine Crap uh, swimming, Michael Wendon swimming, and Mal Meninga, no, no, <laughs> Nick Green rowing. Wasn't Dawn Fraser? Uh, no, well, that was the flag. Oh, yeah, she's was, a, uh, an honorary uh, rugby league. And remember, rugby league. the flag can never touch the track. It's like, it's, that's Is a that right? very, very important yeah, okay. thing. Dawn Fraser stole the flag. Then, yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> Tina... We'll talk about after the event later. <laughs> and then Tina Arena and the Sydney Children's Choir sing The Flame, which I'm assuming is the Cheap Trick song, right? No. No, no. And they're talking about a set of pipes. Right. Did you see the end when she pointed? Yeah. Wow. And so the long relay ends with the great Herb Elliott, the 1500 metre, never beaten at that distance, 1960 uh, Rome Olympics, carries the torch in. into the stadium. Yes. And it is the jet, 100 years of women participating in the Olympics. Yes. Who got it first? It was a foursome. Yeah. Betty Cuthbert. Yeah. Raylene Boyle, yes. Dorney, Dorney, Dawn no, Fraser, Dorney, yeah. and Shirley Strickland, Della Hunty, yes. oh, right, yeah. which is a right. huge. And meanwhile, it's mm. closed. The, the, they're being closed in by the the, the, the participating sports people. That's oh, right. The they sort of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah they form a guard dark, of honor. It's, it's, it's yeah. spotlit, beautiful. Then so they go on a relay. Yeah. Shane Gould, who is like the first Olympics I remember is 1972. Shane, yeah. three golds, yeah. a silver and a bronze. Extraordinary, 15 years old. Trained up where I trained with Forbes Carlisle. Yes. One of us went <laughs> on to Olympic Gordon. glory. Pimble. Uh, yeah, right. 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 Oh, another one. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when she handed it to Debbie Flintoff King, yeah. who'd won the 400 metres hurdles in Seoul in 88, yeah. and she did the, the peace sign with yeah, her hands, right. you know, the bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Flintoff King hands yeah. it over to Kathy Freeman. Yes, yes. And there's, a, there's actually an article in the paper today about John Coates talking about his reasons for selecting Kathy and how emotional he was meeting her. And she just goes, it's a great honour. Why me? Yeah. And she goes, I'm happy to do and it. And then she said she eats up pressure. It's not pressure. <laughs> Give me pressure. I'll do it. Because she had not just the, the 400, the 200, and this particular moment as well to handle. Well, I, I mean, I argue... Like I, it's a it's an off made argument, and the documentary is extraordinary. Watching, I, yeah, I watched yeah. it last night, and yeah. I'm blubbing my way the whole through. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think she's just one of the most um, unbelievable Australians we've ever had. Yes, yes. But an incredible athlete who always maximised her ability at the you know at whatever level she could perform, she performed. And then there was the drama with the French woman, but we'll get to that later. Marie Jose, but but but. but um, I would wonder now, 20 years on with the way that professionalism has incurred on sport even more, mm. that she wouldn't have been allowed to do it, right? Because, really? Because there were a lot of stairs. She was. Well, oh, yeah. h Yeah, she uh, was in the middle of, and with the delay in the cauldron, yeah. she did get wet and cold and whatever. And, yeah. and she had this singular St event coming up in her life in about 10 days' yeah, yeah. time. But tell us about the glitch. Yeah. So she runs up. The, she walks up the stairs, gets to the top, walks lights across it. water, lights it, lights steps it. in the middle, and then the. Well, it actually goes up. <coughs> right. It does go up yep. for about. It does go up for about. That's mm, right. So it's gone above and it's firing yeah. above, and then it has to sit there. Well, it's meant to go straight up. Right. Right. And right. as it comes up, the the trunk um, <laughs> gets inside it and uh, lifts it up. Yes. And the the big issue we had was that. As it was going up, yeah. it was on gas tanks. Yep. Right. Yeah. And uh, when it gets to the top, it goes to mains. The trunk gets it, and the, the mains are in the trunk. Right. Right. Okay. So one of the we, we had two big worries, um, and only one is, is really talked about, which is the fact that we were going to run out of gas. Yes. If the thing did <laughs> not too long. keep going, <laughs> uh, and it, that was the hassle. Is a twenty cent capacitor. Uh, had, that's what you're saying about Richard Ware, etc. That. You yeah. don't want to be the the games that the flame goes out before it starts. Well, exactly, <laughs> and and the in built into that was the fact that Richard had really fought for the music he was using, okay. which was Berlioz's Requiem, and there was a lot of hoo ha about Can that. Can I say that was the one thing that really grated when I saw the replay? I thought, where are we at a high Anglican funeral? 
Well, it just really struck me as odd, you know. Almost. (laughs) I had issues with it. I was in charge of the crackers because I'd been in charge of cracking, you know, (laughs) being crackers. Oh, we missed Um, cracking on. (laughs) Obviously, the crackers were going to go off after (laughs) the cauldron was there. And that was not Sid, Sid Howard? No, it was Foti's. It was Foti's then. Yeah, it was Foti's. And and, uh, I'm very close to Foti's. Um, And they had said to me, look, Give us some music, you right. know, because yeah, it's, it's yeah. really hard. Uh, it's, a, it's a different vibe mm-hmm. to do crackers without music and crackers with music. And, and, you know, my other thing was I didn't want Sydney's Australia's Olympics to finish yeah. with a Frenchman's funeral. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, so <laughs> I just happened to find, I went, I've been working with the Sydney Symphony, and I realised that they played... Um, a piece by uh, uh, Percy Granger, Granger okay. uh, called The Warriors, yeah. which they didn't do that often because it takes two whole orchestras to do it. Mm. But we had a recording of it and we had the, the sheet music and, you know, they weren't going to play it live, you know, the, the <laughs> orchestra's half bow in in because um, you, um, you can't amplify them. You get yeah. wind in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the microphones. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, so we... Fortunately, just as the, the music runs out, I mean, if you watch it, and the cauldron is sitting there, and just as it starts moving again, in comes Percy Granger Yay! and the fire. <laughs> Can you imagine Percy arriving and going, I've got something for you guys, yeah. two orchestras, please. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and you were at work, Dennis, right? You still didn't know where the gas was going to hold out. No, we did. Once no. it got the, it, it, uh, yeah. the trunk okay. in, this right. is just fine. like the Apollo Eleven lunar module la- landing. Yeah. Nineteen yeah. seconds yeah. of fuel. Nineteen seconds of fuel. Yeah. You were at work. I was. Were you watching I, it I live? Was, I was in a in my studio in Glebe. Watch. Oh no, no, I'd gone home from work because my other half was pregnant, seven and a half months pregnant, and she'd been hosting the Prelude. Can we say who it is? <laughs> Chris Bath. Chris so Bath. She, so she oh, was. Oh yes. So she was pregnant with Darcy. So my son was on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. In, in her belly. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right. So she, and she, because of you know being seven and a half months pregnant, she actually came home after the Prelude yeah. and missed the first hour yeah. of the um, ceremony. And I watched the the, the rest of it with her. And we were sitting on the couch, and she was just going nuts. No. 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 Being, no. Being there as you and I both were, you know, like you always remember those things as you're thinking that it just took forever before it actually got mm. going and they had to override the, the switch. And Didn't someone hit it with a stick? Literally, yeah. well, that's the rumour. Exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. 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 I mean, but it took four minutes, right? And we were talking the other Percussive day about... Percussive maintenance. Percussive <laughs> maintenance, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, we're, again, we've been talking a bit about moon missions lately. Apollo 12 gets hit by lightning. Within 30 seconds, they work out, flick the switch. It takes us four minutes. <laughs> but my memory, actually, because everybody was going, oh, no, oh, no. But it actually didn't seem that long as four minutes. Because yeah. no. you were just willing it to no, be over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it actually was... It was kind of the weird reverse. But if it didn't work, that's it for Samaranch. There's no greatest games, anything. <laughs> it's just taken it away from him. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was it was quite a moment. And then, if you go on and watch the Freeman documentary, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's so it's, that wasn't enough for Kathy Freeman. We had something else to come. But the crackers were going off. Once you'd wrapped up and you got out of the precinct, what did you do, Ignatius? Straight to the pub. Straight yeah, to the pub. Right, yeah. <laughs> do you remember the drink? <laughs> well, at, at, at Homebush? At Homebush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. With the crowds. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you could always, because, you know, it sort of wrap yeah. around about 11, yeah. 12 at night. You could always see some of the athletes in I there. think we were skipping oh. from Soho to Greenwich, going, where are Aussies? Woohoo! Uh, you know? Well, we had, uh, there was eight eight bombs in, in the stadium. Yeah. Um, and if someone wasn't in their bomb when they should be, um, the stage managers had been rehearsed to say, he's in bomb nine. <laughs> Which was, of course, the palm bush. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, one last thing: uh, Dean Perry, of course, tap dogs, etc., etc., yep. was involved with one of the segments. Uh, he also does show calls for the rugby league uh, during the final series as uh, a second sort of standby. Um, lovely man. Yeah, um, absolutely. Who was doing the show call on the night of the Olympics? Do you um, lovely lady called Dawn Martin okay. and the lovely man called Adam Lowe. Two of them. Two of them. Why yep. two? Um. Redundancy in case one fell over. Yeah, well, well it kind of one got stuck on the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> in case no, one was in Vom 9. That's we, <laughs> <laughs> he was in Vom 9. <laughs> Pretty soon. But you had after. a bit of flexibility, as you said, a bit of time could move. The segments were all recorded, each one. They backed each other up. Right, okay. They backed each other up. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, um, Adam yeah. was 
the producer on Vivid for the last two years. Ah, yes. So he, he, he's still yes, in the business. Yes, You've heard of Vivid? Hey? You've heard of Vivid? Yes. Well, um, <laughs> this, this man here picked me up, put me into Vivid, and uh, that was uh, six, six years ago this year, but you were there another five or six, seven years before that, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, I was there for yeah. ten long, long years. years. No. Stephen, Dennis, <laughs> yes. can I say, because I think we're, we're heading towards the end of this particular yeah. show. Story. And the rugby league season is going to wrap fairly soon, and yeah. we're going to keep going with this show. Surely we can get Ignatius back to talk about his solo music career, Vivid, all those of sorts course. of things. There's so Absolutely. many wonderful things. Yeah. Very quickly, did you have an involvement in the closing ceremony? Yes. I always feel the closing ceremony doesn't get the props it deserves. I thought it was an extraordinary yes. night. It's, it's, always, it's always yeah. the poor relation. And what, what do you, but it got a higher audience, 1.4 billion, I think, 1.2 yeah. for the opening. It's, it's also why it's always pop music. Yes, you of know, course. So with all the bands. Kylie Minogue doing Dancing Queen. That's a party. The yeah. Oils. The Sorry. The Oils. And yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was an amazing moment. And I was at that one. There you yeah. go. I was at that one. Finally. <laughs> it was so much better. Yes. Yeah. Red Bomb Bass, of course, the Inflatables. And, yep. The yeah. Inflatables, yeah. The, yeah. Um, the Drag Queen. I'm drag trying to remember. Oh, and our, our friend um, Tobin Saunders, I just saw a picture the other day, in was the, sitting in one of them. <laughs> and, and it starts, is it Stephen? I can't remember. He was on the... Lawnmower or whatever it was, right uh, at the start. Or, one of the three I'll swing back. Yes. Yeah, so the, ah, there's a solo, yes. solo thing, and it's whatever he's yeah. trying to start is not working. Lawnmower man. Lawnmower man. And, right. and, and all the people too. around me are going, I can't believe it. We made it all the way through, and now this. This <laughs> guy is stuffing up. It was perfect. Everyone yeah, was just yeah. sucked yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Uh, in excess, who else? Did Jimmy Barnes get to do anything? Yeah, he yep. did Working Class Man. Working Class Man, Kylie. The oils, not bad, eh? Painters yeah. and Dockers played, I think, from memory. Did they? Yeah. Am I right on that? Lubricated goat? No, am I getting this wrong? <laughs> but no ACDC. In the raw. Uh, <laughs> no ACDC. That's weird. Why? They they asked for too much money. Nah. Did they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everybody else played for this is Olympic tradition. One gold dollar. Wow. Beautiful. But, but ACDC wanted a Because I've always heard they won't. Fortune. They won't mind. They'll only ever perform live to start with, which is why they've never done the NRL. Though Cold Chisel changed that, of course. Oh, yeah. I know that. Is that gold coin legal mean. tender? Can, is, 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 did you use <laughs> or it Or a doubloon, like yeah, yeah, yeah. an yeah. 12th century doubloon. And <laughs> to top it all off, you and I both saw Kathy Freeman run. Yes. I was getting a coffee. There was only one espresso machine no. in the whole state. Ah. No, no, don't say this. I was. I was in a queue of about 40. I got to the front, paid for coffee with for me and my dad, who's no longer with us, but a great athletics fan. And then everybody ran. <laughs> no coffee. They just ran. I went... Oh, you know, so I raged back, not knowing what time was going to be. He said, "No, you're okay. It's just about to happen." And I, I swear, a hundred nine thousand people were crying. They were all in tears. For, for me, th th there are three nights of sport that define me. One was mm. winning our Northern Suburbs Premier League Basketball <laughs> Championship after chasing it for thirty years, and I thought I'd never do it. <laughs> the second is the Tigers winning in two thousand and five, having been in, there in eighty nine when Balmain lost to your Canberra Raiders. Did you cry? Uh no, no, oh, I was well. I was emotional when I rang my mother. I was emotional when I rang my mother. 2005. But yeah, you're emotional. Yeah. yeah, but but that night is the greatest night of sport ever. I've ever been ever. involved in. It started with Titania Gregorieva yeah, yeah. going up against Stacey Dragula in the yeah. pole vault. So they got the Australians going. Yeah. For the nerds, you know, there was... We uh, loved her as a, a new Aussie, didn't we? Th there was the Romanian Zabo beating uh, Sonia O'Sullivan in the women's 5,000 yeah, metres. Yeah. Does anyone remember that Michael Johnson ran in the men's 400 metres? No. One? The greatest no. male sprinter of all time. No one remembers. <laughs> and there was a long jump too, wasn't there? Uh, no, the triple jump. Jonathan triple jump, Edwards, yeah, the yeah, world yeah, record for yeah, the Great Britain. Yeah. Uh, uh, Maria Matola won the 800 metres for Mozambique on the track. Mm -hmm. And then the final event of the night, final, was the men's 10,000 metres, which is pretty much my favourite yeah, race. Yeah. And the Ethiopian Haley Gebra Selesi was the unbackable favourite. <laughs> right. And, and the, the way the 10,000 metre worked, it's not like the Tour de France. You don't get a breakaway pack going away. It's just you set a pace and it's a war of attrition, yeah, yeah. and people drop off. Yeah. So we're into the final lap, <laughs> and Gebra Celeste's up against the two Kenyans who are running together, oh, and I did write pack. their names down. <laughs> as a pack. <laughs> Paul Turgat and Asifa Mezgebu, Mezgebu right? Yeah. Now, Gebra Celeste, best sprint. 100 metres out, if you're all level 100 metres, it's a gold medal, it's done. Yeah. So they have to make a move from further out. And That's I was right. on the I back, remember that now. On the yeah, back yeah, straight, yeah. right? <laughs> and so Gebra Celeste is sitting there, rails run, looking great. He's got the two Kenyans on the right shoulder yeah. and he just momentarily looks left to see if there's any other threat. 
So he looks left and the two Kenyans have gone. They go. Ah. <laughs> and you see Gabriel Celesi go, holy Michael Lark. <laughs> and he chases them and he gets them on the line. Oh, yeah, it but, was uh, extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. The stadium was yeah. way less than half full. Of course. Everyone had gone because Kathy had won. Yeah. Uh, the two Kenyans went and did victory lap high fives. It was an extraordinary <laughs> night. But the Freeman thing, you know, as, as they say in the documentary, Kathy ran a race plan according to a coach to win the gold medal, not to do her best time. Best time, no. She did 49, right? Yeah, yeah. So her reaction, first of all, just looked like, oh, I'm glad that's over. And mm-hmm. disappointed yeah. about the time. I didn't do 48 or under. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and even McAvaney's call went, it's just like the definitive record of the oh, call. Work to do. And, and, yeah, and that's, that's the moment. Like, I think even he says it's probably not, it's his definitive call, but he just yep. goes, Kathy has work to do. Oh, yep. And, she was, like, and she was in third on the, and, and it just encapsulated exactly that moment. Well, it was you're, perfect. You're, angle, uh, you, were you on the straight, the home straight? I was on the back straight. On the back straight we but, so she's about 250 metres to go. Coming around the corner, you couldn't tell. Yeah. You thought, oh, no, she's blown it. No, she was just sitting, sitting. And, and she describes in the documentary, I felt incredible the whole night. And she goes, I was jogging in the back because she was going to kick from 120 yeah, yeah. metres out. Yeah. And she was the athlete under the most pressure. Yeah, and yeah. Marie... And the suit. And, and the suit. Yeah. And she said it was like slicing through yeah. air. And Marie-Jose <laughs> Parekh, yeah. who was an amazing did a athlete, runner. but she powdered, let's yeah. face it. She did a Sonny Bill Williams, she? did she? a Sonny Bill Williams. <laughs> <laughs> she went to France in disgrace. Yeah. I, I've got one more question before we wrap it up. The eternity sign. Mm. Tell us about that. Oh, so the, the, the eternity sign... Um, was something that took quite a while to work up. You uh, mean to convince people? No. Yes, yes. to convince people. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually, after we'd done the first Bridge Effect in 1996, mm-hmm. seven, uh, which was actually a designer, Peter England, um, <laughs> having a, a funny cigarette while sitting at the, um, <laughs> really? the, at the opera house <laughs> and looking at the bridge and okay. going, I am smiling. <laughs> and so, you know, up it went. Wow. We then had to think about, you know, bridge effects yep. for the next few years. Yeah. And um, I had all of these, um, these, these uh, Martin Sharp prints. Of course, he was a of, big of fan. Course, he was oh, the, I'm a huge fan yeah, of his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in my office at the. At, so it just um, was there. Just on the just wall. Just looking at you. Yeah. And we had this. Um, <laughs> well, funnily enough, we had this this uh, work experience guy. I don't know where he was from, uh, some posh school. Um, and, you know, the biggest problem with work experience people is getting them. They're bored, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you what, know, what giving them doing? something to do. <laughs> anyway, he, be, he became infatuated with the Trinity. Yeah. And, he know, didn't know the history. Didn't know the history. No, no, no. And I just happened to have the old um, video, yeah. the, the, the VCR documentary Arthur on Arthur Stace. Yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, I said, yeah, if you're interested, take it home and... and um, read up. Yeah, you know, read up on it. Anyway, that Friday afternoon when we had our usual wine o'clock, which is... <laughs> what time that start? <laughs> when we always got our best ideas. Afternoon is 12.01 p.m. <laughs> yeah, that's... Exactly. <laughs> and we were going, what are we going to do, you know, and, and this little kid... Goes, why didn't you put eternity up on the no, bridge? Wow. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and I went, who, who has no name? Hold of that. Oh, <laughs> no, well, no. I've forgotten it. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, 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 and now he's the Consign Prime Minister, the Scott history. Morrison, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can, he, can he contact us, Chris? Is there yeah, a point? Please. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then it did officially you blow up the, the rings on the bridge? We did. Oh, and yeah. that was always the, the idea. Yeah. So um, our. Um, uh, the the OCA, the Olympic Coordination Authority, and I used to remind people that Oka was Latin for goose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were desperate to you know to put the rings up on the bridge. Yes, uh, and went and did it without us. You know, we were doing the the, the, the fireworks for um, uh, the city of Sydney, and yeah. they said, no, 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 we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. So they they spent about. 12 times more money than we would have spent. Put the rings up, yeah. Yeah, putting, putting these actual rings up. Yeah, you know, yeah. what we used to do was put up a mesh yeah, yeah. and sew rope like yeah, onto right. it. Yeah. So, you know, it was wind transparent, light. Yeah. it was light, yeah, yeah. it could be, you know. Yeah. But no, yeah. they had to. So we went, okay, well, can we put fireworks on them? And um, they said, oh, no, 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 you know, you'll blow them up, you'll do it. We said, nah. <laughs> Anyway, we did all the we did all the mathematics, and we figured out that the, the reverse force was not going to 
but not going to do anything too serious. So at the last moment of the fireworks, that which, again, I was in charge of. That's what Forge. I did in... in uh, Fody? Uh, yeah, Forge. Yeah, okay. mm. Forge. Um, what I did in closing ceremony was the crackers. Mm. And again, and uh, we actually, until they opened Atlantis in um, Dubai, about five, six, no, ten years later, it was still the biggest fireworks show in history. Right? Wow. And they used some of Pee Wee's music in the crackers, didn't they, I think? From uh, the yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, used, we used the Olympic, we used um, okay. Arrival. Drivers, right, yeah. okay. Can I just say I'm wearing my... Official a Sydney bid t shirt from Monaco 1993. Wow, wow. Uh, yeah. And you're holding your breast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, say, I still fit in it just. I just <laughs> courtesy of my friend Shauna Wilson. Can I just give you a little tidbit too? Talking about the bid, um, I was called in by the manager of Rogues, the nightclub, on a quiet night. It was shut down and there was going to be um, uh, what well, was actually an afternoon, late lunch dinner. Uh, it was being held by Gretel Packer, Gretel Packer. Uh, Gretel. A, a bunch of ladies only to basically smother uh, Prince Albert with attention. <laughs> because he was one of the, yep. what are they called? Judges. Delegates. 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 Yep. We wanted his vote. So it was one of those many things they did to get it over the line. There must have been many of those. I saw him at the court in a few weeks, a few days later. And what, you were providing the musical I accompaniment? I the background music, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. What's Prince Albert into? Uh, He'd be a Chardet guy, wouldn't he? Yeah, yes. smooth operator. Yes. <laughs> I'll say no more. Now, on that note, uh, that's it. Fire up the quiet Australian. Thank you very much, Ignatius Jones. Oh, thank you, Ignatius. Pleasure. That was thank wonderful. You, yeah. Dennis, Chris, myself. See ya. Cause I'm all fired up, I'm all fired up and lonesome I got a chip on my shoulder, I'm acting just a little too tough